Hi, I'm Mr. Bennett. I teach conceptual chemistry here at Los Alamitos High School. And if you're watching this video, you're probably one of my students. In this video, I'm going to explain how the flipped classroom is going to uh, be implemented this year in our class. So what to expect and uh, how things are changing. Okay, so let's talk about the traditional classroom. Traditional classroom would be the uh, classroom that you're used to experiencing, right? And typically you have lectures. Uh, these take place in class. And then you have homework, which happens exactly where it says. Happens at homework, or at home, rather, right? Work on your practice problems, and it's based on the lecture. Uh, then you have labs. They happen in class. And then you would have projects, which for the most part would happen just like homework, right? They'd be at home. And then you have group collaboration, which uh, maybe uh, could be homework, right? Uh, if it was like a group project or something like that. Uh, and then also could happen in class, right? But what we end up seeing happening in a traditional classroom is that uh, if you were to look at the class as being kind of a pie, some sort of like pie graph, right? What we end up seeing is that you end up with like a wedge like that that gets split up between labs and maybe a tiny little sliver here for projects. Some of you are happy about that because maybe projects are something that you're not particularly comfortable with. Uh, and then also some uh, group collaboration. But the big, huge portion of the pie out here, that is everybody's favorite, the lecture. So we end up delivering all this content, all this material or stuff about science, right, through lectures, and it ends up monopolizing a good amount of the class time. So problems that I see with the traditional classroom is, first of all, it's teacher-controlled pace. That means uh, the teacher controls the speed. Oops, sorry, I jumped ahead there. Uh, the teacher controls the speed, right? So pace is really just speed. So if I'm moving too fast, then maybe you get frustrated, right? Because I'm going too fast and you get lost and maybe you raise your hand and you ask for help, but maybe you just are tired of asking for help or tired of asking me for me to slow down and you just are lost, right? Or maybe in a particular day I go really fast and you happen to miss that day, so I covered a lot of material. Uh, then you have people who feel like the class is going achingly slow, right? I'm talking too slow. There's too many questions. He keeps going back and repeating something, right? There's always different things that happen that will make it feel like, okay, we've already covered this, let's move on, let's move on to something new, right? So you could be on either end of the extreme feeling like it's too slow or too fast or maybe you're you know part of the lucky few who are right in the middle and feel like oh this class is amazing he goes exactly at the speed at which I want right second problem I see is that there's no help at home for the homework right so if your notes are not great if you don't take good notes or maybe if um, you were one of those people who were lost um, or maybe you were absent there's no help with the homework at home unless you have some like you know chemist father or chemist mom or you have you know a teacher who also teaches science who's your mom or your uncle or your cousin or your brother or sister so maybe you have a resource at home but even then more times than not I find that even if you have a parent at home who knows this stuff uh, they may not be the best teacher for you in terms of understanding the material so no help at home right you can't take me home with you to help you with your homework Third problem I see is that in class, we have a lack of time. Remember that pie I drew, right? There's a lack of time for help to help you out, right? You come in the next day, we check your homework, I give you the answers. There's not a lot of time to devote and say, hey, this is how we do this. Uh, as far as labs go, you know, we do one lab a unit, maybe two labs a unit, but not a lot of labs to practice. And so labs are few and far between. And then just practice in class. Let's do lots of practice problems so that when we do get to the homework, it's easier. Okay, so I see a lack of time for that. What the flip classroom does is it takes those lectures, those things that we're taking up a huge portion of the pie, and we record them as videos. Let me switch over to my pen here, sorry. We record them as videos. Those videos then get placed online. Okay? Whether it's YouTube or any other place I can, I can post them, uh, those videos then get placed online. They become the homework. So watching a recorded lecture is your homework. 
and you take notes on it as your homework. Chances are you can do decent notes. The notes we are going to do are guided notes, which means it tells you exactly what you need to write, um, or at least it should be. you should be able to figure out what you need to write. So really a process that you've done many, many times with teachers in the classroom, you're going to do at home. So in most cases, most students feel fairly comfortable filling in guided notes. And on top of that, it's recorded, which means you can rewatch it if you miss something. Practice problems. Those, those are going to be done in class. So everything that was homework before is now classwork, right? The homework that you would take home and struggle at because that you didn't have help or struggle with because you didn't have help at home, right, is now classwork. And we still have labs. Labs are not going anywhere. We still have projects. We still have group collaboration. So really, the reason why we call it a flipped classroom is that what was once classwork, right, and what was once homework has flipped. Okay, so lectures are now homework and practice problems are now classwork. Okay, what are the benefits though? The benefits are that you control the pace. It is student controlled. That means that these lectures, since they are homework and since they are videos and you're controlling them, you can pause it so if something happens and you want to check it out, maybe there's a, something on the screen that you really want to see. Uh, maybe I've got a bunch of writing on the screen. You need to write some of it down, right? Just like in class, when you're copying down those notes, right? There's that quiet time where everyone's like really, really working fast to copy down all the notes that are on the screen, right? You feel rushed. Maybe you start abbreviating. Maybe you leave some things out. It's a nightmare. But with a video, you can pause it and you can take the time you need to write everything out, spell it out. You can organize the way that you're writing your notes so that it actually makes sense to you. You're not just trying to write things down and cram things in. You have the time. Not only that, if I say something and you miss it, you can rewind. Crazy. Can't do that in real life. Sorry, I don't do rewind. And also, when it comes to maybe you forgot something, maybe it's just before the test and you want to go over something that you've been struggling with, you can rewatch huge right you can't rewatch a lecture in class i'm not going to repeat the whole thing over again right this way it's accessible to you anytime now that also means that in class there's plenty of help right i'll be here my focus in class is to help you with practice problems so if you're struggling if you have questions that's what i'm gonna do the next day you've watched the video you feel great maybe you'll just go to work Maybe there's a group of students, six or seven, maybe half the class, that feel like they're still struggling with the idea. I will reteach it. it. Does not mean that I'm going to stop teaching. It just means that I can identify the things we're struggling with and I can spend more time on that. I don't have to spend time going over all the little details of the initial content. You get that in the video. This also means we have, well, what we just said, more time for help, more time for labs, okay? So I'll be able to help with labs won't feel as lost with labs, and tons of practice. So, probably saying at this point, did he say videos? Am I watching videos? Yes, I record my lessons. I, meaning me, Mr. Bennett, am in the videos, okay? So it will be me. There is occasionally the possibility that you'll be watching a video that was made by someone else, but if that's the case, it's because I really, really like that video, and I feel like they do an excellent job at presenting the content. But in most cases, 99.9% .9 of the time, it's going to be me in the video. Sorry, okay? I tried to get Brad Pitt to stand in for me, but uh, he's just busy, so, and yeah. Uh, another little kind of side note on this is that what this is gonna do is it's going to take a typical lecture and it will cut the time in about a third, which means that a, say, 30 minute lecture is now 10 minutes. You watch a 10 minute video. Does that mean that you're just going to sit there for 10 minutes and you're done? Probably not. If you're going to actively watch the video, it's going to take more time than that because you're, ha you're going to have to pause it to write some stuff down. You may have to rewind it to catch something that you missed. This does mean that you have to manage your own learning though. I am not spoon feeding you the material. Okay, You're not just going to sit there in class and listen to me go on and 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 on about chemistry. It's not going to work that way. Okay. There is no spoon feeding in this class. 
you have to get the content. You have to watch the video, you have to watch it actively, meaning you have to pay attention, take notes, respond to some questions about the video, okay? You have to do things. And I know that some of you are all of a sudden freaking out right now in your minds like, oh, he's gonna make me do stuff. He's gonna make me do things in the science class. Yes, this year you're gonna have to do stuff, okay? There's no one in this class that's gonna get by with just sitting there, listening, and putting your name on some papers and passing them in and just hoping to skate through. It's not gonna happen. You have to do stuff. That's how this class is gonna work. And the sooner you get used to that, the sooner you start doing, the easier this class is gonna be. You have tons of opportunities to get a good grade in this class. You're actually gonna have to work harder. It's gonna be more annoying and more work to do bad in this class. So if you just go with it, have an open mind, and do what you gotta do, this will be really easy. This will be really good and really, really, I think, effective. So I mentioned in there a little bit, you have to answer some questions and stuff during the video, right? Uh, so look at this. It says, arrive to class each day prepared. Ooh, we always hear that word in high school, right? They're like, arrive to class prepared, have a pencil, right? Have a notebook, have paper, things like that. What I mean by prepared, you have your WAS completed. Yes, you need a pencil, we're gonna do stuff in class. Yes, you need paper and stuff like that. But by preparedness, I'm talking about something called a WASC. What WASC stands for is, first of all, you're going to have watched the video. You will have taken your notes. Remember, these are guided notes, okay? There's a possibility there may be some non-guided notes, but for the most part, they're going to be guided. That means it's like fill in the blank or like fill in the little squares or copy the picture or things like that, okay? Uh, you're then going to submit an online summary. So this is a basically a form that you're going to answer online. Sometimes it's going to be guided as well. So it'll be questions like, what do you think about this? Or what's an example of this? That sort of thing. Sometimes it's just going to be a reflection, meaning tell me what you thought. Okay, more open. Uh, but generally speaking, a lot of the times it will be guided. So you answer some questions. You go, it's on the same page as the video. You fill in the little boxes. You hit submit. It gets submitted to me online. It's cool, easy. You are then going to create a question regarding the lesson. We'll talk more about this question. This is not just like, oh, uh, I watched a video about atoms. And so my question today is, what is an atom? That's not a good question, okay? Yes, it's a question. Yes, it's about the content. Yes, you can answer it. But we're gonna create what are called hot questions. These are higher order thinking questions. These are questions that show that you know more than just what an atom is, okay? If I'm concerned that you know what an atom is, I am concerned, but there's more to it, okay? So we'll go over how to create these questions, but they need to be, these need to be good questions. Uh, by the end of the class the next day, following the video, you need to have the answers to these questions before you leave. So these questions are really, really important. And then once we get to class, we apply the lesson. So that's why you have to be prepared every day because class is all about applying the lesson. Okay, so first of all, I have a little typo up here. This should say, what does the teacher do? So like, in other words, I'm watching all these videos now as a student, right? Students watching all these videos and answering these questions online. Computer seems like it's doing all the work. What's the teacher doing, right? Well, as I said earlier, my number one goal is student learning. So I'm doing everything I can to improve student learning. That means I'm answering questions. I am clarifying misconceptions. So I'm going around and I'm looking at stuff. I'm reading your summaries. I am uh, you know, answering some questions regarding some math and if I see a misconception, if I see someone is kind of a little confused about something, I'm clarifying that up. I'm answering questions where people are stuck. I may reteach part of the lesson. I may ask, okay, you know, by show of hands, how many people understood this part? Okay, how many people feel like they, they could use a little extra teaching on this part? And if like seven or eight people or half the class or three quarters of the class decide, hey, that was really not that great in the lecture, Mr. Bennett, really, if I were to sum it all up, all it means is that I am focused throughout the entire class at meeting your learning needs for the full class period. It's not the 10 minutes at the end of the class. It's not the five minutes at the end of the class. It's not the five minutes at the beginning of the class when we're going over the homework. It's the whole class. So at this point, I'm also guessing some of you are like, this is really weird, or wow, it's gonna be really hard, or uh, maybe some of you are cheering and they're like, this is the greatest thing ever. So. I, I understand there's a range of emotions regarding this idea. It is going to be rough. 
But understand, I am here to support you 110%. Not only am I here in class, but I also have a website, I have email address, I have my website actually will let you communicate to me through my cell phone. There are tons and tons of ways for you to make, for you to contact me and get help. But the thing is, it goes back to that idea that you're managing your own learning, which means when you have a question, you have to come ask me in person or through some digital means. Okay? My suggestion right now is if you're feeling scared, if you're feeling uneasy about this, take it one lesson at a time. My guarantee is that if you actively participate in my course, that means you watch the videos, you come in prepared, and when we do things in class, you actually do them. I guarantee, number one, that you will challenge yourself. We will challenge each other in ways we were not able to before. We'll be able to do things in class that you've never been able to do in a traditional setting. Number two, you're gonna improve your learning skills. You're gonna learn how you learn, which kinda sounds weird, uh, and you're going to just improve all around as a learner because you're going to be managing it. You're going to uh, learn things about yourself and how you access information that you didn't know before. And number three, you're going to be more confident. You will gain confidence as a student because you're going to see that with each step you could learn science, chemistry, which I guarantee some of you are really scared about just being in a science class, just being in a chemistry class. And when you start succeeding and you start making those steps, that confidence is going to go through the roof. So I want to end this right now with a pledge. That sounds kind of weird. Let's talk about what a pledge is. A pledge is a promise. Okay, So that means that I want you guys to promise right now. Okay, You're going to make a promise to me, but more importantly, you're making a promise to yourself. Okay, and This is cheesy and corny. But just think of me as watching you in the virtual world and all everyone else is there too. And everyone at the same time right now is taking this pledge, making this promise. So wherever you are, if you're on the bus going to a football game, if you are sitting in your bedroom right now watching on the computer or in your living room because you got one of those cool ginormous like smart TVs and like everyone's looking at this like, wow, he's actually doing homework or she, all right? What I want you to do right now, is you're gonna hold up your hand, your right one, okay? Because that's the one we do, okay? And you're gonna say, I, and your name, okay? Go along with me right now. So, as I say it, you say it. I, Mr. Bennett, promise, pledge, to actively learn in chemistry this year to make the greatest effort to come to class prepared each and every day, to approach the class each day with my focus on my learning, to ask for help when I need it, and to help others in need. All right, that's it. That is the flip classroom. We'll go into more details. We'll talk more about the WISC. We'll get lots of practice. This first few weeks, it's all about practicing. We'll talk about how to access the videos. We'll answer all of those questions. But for right now, I want you to understand the why and the what. We'll talk about the how later. All right? See you tomorrow.